Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today we are continuing our playthrough of Israeli Air Force Leader from Dan Versen Games. This game is designed by Kevin Versen. We are look, taking a playthrough of the 1973 Yom Kippur War um, campaign. And we completed the first of our day one missions yet uh, in part one. I almost said yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. In part one. <clears throat> so... Today we're going to do the secondary mission in that game. Um, there are some, obviously every leader game has its own little twists on the system because of, you know, the, the subject matter. Uh, some of the cool ones here with uh, IAF would be like the invasion track here at the bottom, um, right here. And as you can kind of see, let me slide this up a little bit. As it goes to the left, things get worse and worse. So you have no penalty, which is what we are right now. Then they would get plus one recon. The recon track determines how many targets you draw. And each target has the potential to have the invasion keyword on it, which means if you don't destroy the target that day at the start of the next day, this track moves to the uh, right, rather. So, you know, having extra one extra target, you're like, oh, well, maybe that just gives me more choice. Well, there's a risk involved there. Then you could get that plus an additional stress, which obviously stress is bad. Then you can lose SOs and you can retreat your recon, which again is going to push your target number up. How many cards? It's better to draw fewer cards than more cards in this game because of the invasion track. So... You kind of have to pick and choose strategically what targets you're going to attack. And sometimes you might have to attack something you really probably would rather not based on, you know, your pilot situation. And that's kind of where we are. And I'll get to that in a moment. But um, we did move our infrastructure track one. So infrastructure, what that does is that's going to add additional um, enemy units, you know, surface to air missiles, etc., in the center area, in the target area when that is a plus one. Once you start going down, you're going to actually start removing them. So these three tracks going to the right is good. This track going to the right is bad. So just something I wanted to mention. I believe I mentioned it in part one, but I just wanted to kind of reiterate that. The other thing I wanted to mention that I didn't really talk about is the map here. All the numbers on the map indicate target cards. So say this card here has a, has a number, target one, and that target is here, right? So this is the Sinai or yeah, yeah, the sign. Well, this is the Sinai, this is Egypt. So here's one and there's a stress number that goes along with attacking targets in these areas. So this is stress three high stress area, more heavily defended. Obviously this is, you know, Egypt. This is, you know, the, uh, the Suez Canal and everything. And then this is the Sinai, which is a little bit lower stress. You get two. And the same thing when you're talking about the other front, the, uh, the Golan Heights and everything, that's stress three. And then this is more Israel itself and so on. Um, Jordan, et cetera. This is a little bit lower. Stress two again. So you have a three, two, three situation. The first target we attacked was number 10, and it's right here. It's in the Sinai. It's a two stress one. So at the end of our mission, uh, our pilot Knight had five stress, and our pilot Star had one stress. So now, because of that, they actually got bumped up. And here's Knight's card. As you can see, he's at seven stress. So, uh, oh, and they have cool ratings, which is. Something that you're probably familiar with if you've played leader games. His cool rating is a zero. So he did not get to take any uh, any of that stress off automatically. So we can talk about now what we're, what we're doing in this mission, which is hitting this target right here. So as you can see, this is target number 36. And on our campaign card, target number 36 is located in... Where, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's in the upper 
It's in Syria, and it's in the upper right corner of our campaign map. Rather than drag the map back, I'll just mention that. So it's in Syria. Uh, we can take eight aircraft. We have six available to us, so this will be an all-out, taking everybody we've got kind of situation. There is an optional rule for this game that if you, which, which I'm not using, but I believe if you spend, uh, uh, depends on the length of the campaign, and we're playing short, but if you, you, you basically can elect to, if you take, you know, one aircraft fewer than this number, you can gain um, a victory point, but it costs you SO to elect that. So um, there, there are some pretty cool optional rules for this game. All of them involve spending SO points at the start of the campaign in order to kind of get some additional X, uh, victory points or maybe XP, uh, you know, from completing the uh the mission so eight obviously when you're allowed to take eight aircraft this is a big target it is a central headquarters it's worth two victory points it will move both the recon and intel tracks one to the right which is good doesn't do anything for our infrastructure but we already did one damage of infrastructure so if i can come out of today with three victory points and having moved recon, intel, and infrastructure all one to the right without having moved invasion one to the right, that's a victory for me. So uh, some of these cards, and mo a lot of them actually have this 1940s, 1950s, because the scope of this game includes the War, war of Independence, the Suez Crisis, uh, the Six-Day War, Yom Kippur, things with Lebanon, uh, the Iraqi nuclear strike. It's got a lot of different eras all the way up to and including today. And so you have aircraft that range from a P-51 Mustang all the way up to the F-35 Lightning II. That's a big, <laughs> obviously, uh, big gap there technologically. And uh, so, you know, you have different hits required to destroy certain targets depending on the era you're playing. So if we're playing in the 40s in the War of Independence, this target would only take six hits to destroy. In the 50s, Suez Crisis, it would take 10. Any other one, including our 73 Yom Kippur, takes 19. So it takes 19 hits to destroy this, which means we need to bring a lot of air-to-ground munitions. We're going to have three sites in each of these approach areas. Um, and uh, two, two bandits in each of the approach areas. And then we're also going to have in the center here, in our target area, four sites and four bandits. So you're talking uh, three, six, nine, twelve uh, sites, eight bandits just on the approaches, and then four and four inside. So that is a lot of enemy firepower that we're going to have to deal with. My aircraft mix for this mission includes... Three Skyhawks, uh, Little, who is a newbie, uh, three to promote, Mouse is average six to promote, and Brick, who is average 10 to promote. Then we have three F4s. We have Warrior, who's green, six to promote, Storm, who's average five to promote, and our flight leader will be Crusader, who's skilled, and nine to promote. Now, obviously, based on their uh, their rank, essentially, you have skilled, obviously that's a little bit higher. He's good or, you know, okay from zero to six stress. And he's going to get a plus one air to air and plus one air to ground as long as he stays unshaken. Once he hits seven stress, he becomes shaken and it becomes a minus one and a minus one. So those are die roll modifiers that we want to avoid if possible. The W here is weight. That impacts the number of munitions you can carry. So, um, obviously, if you look at the two aircraft, the A4 has a weight of five, so it carries a little bit less. If you watched my video on uh, Skyhawk, uh, the Legion War Games game that was just released, it's the same aircraft, but that one is based in Vietnam, and you're flying A4 Skyhawks off of an aircraft carrier. But that one does a really detailed job of explaining and making you kind of have a loadout based on the weight that the aircraft could actually carry. So that's, um, this is more abstracted, but the, obviously it carries less than the, than the Phantom does. So the Phantom, uh, 
and this is a little bit less uh, of a of a dog fighter, a little bit less uh, potent as an air to air platform. These are much better in terms of uh, multi roll, basically. So these are the this is the pilot mix that we're bringing. We've got three three Skyhawks, three Phantoms. We need to to get nineteen hits here. So the next step is to get our munitions together. The way munitions work in this game. Uh, you bought instead of buying them uh, the basic munitions, you basically get to to take certain number of weight points for free. Um, you can also elect to spend SOs for the the so-called special weapons, which in this particular <coughs> excuse me this particular game are the. Uh, the AGM-12 Bullpup, the AGM-62 Walleye, and uh, the AGM-78 Arm, which is an anti-radiation missile. And then the Shakir, or Shafrir rather, sorry. So you do have a nice mix of standard weapons as well, from your, you know, your basic iron bombs um, up to uh, you know, advanced air-to-air -air missiles for the time, the uh, Sparrow and Sidewinder. Cluster bombs, uh, fuel tanks, rockets, um, BLUs. There's there's a lot of uh, variation there. So I am going to put all that together, and we'll come back and discuss what I bought, what we're bringing with us, and uh, then we'll then we'll get this mission underway. Actually, I just realized that I need to draw all my sights and everything first. So. Um, each campaign gives you a specific mix of, of uh, counters to put in, in this cup here of uh, sights and bandits. Most of the count counters or chits are two-sided. One side will be, uh, you know, a, a ground asset like a SAM site, and the other side will be some, you know, some kind of aircraft. So you would pick for this one, each approach needs three sights, so I'll pull out three Chits. We get an SA-3, we get an SA-7, and we get an SA-3. So no no sights there, which is not good. And we'll do East, which also gets three. So we're using our uh, uh, approach numbers here. So here we have no sight, which actually goes back in the cup. Then we have another SA-7. And we have an SA-9. Now we'll do south. Again, we pull out three. We get another no sight back in the cup. We get an SA-9. We get an SA-9. And for the west, three. We get an SA-9, an SA-9, and a no sight. Okay. So we're following the sequence of play here. Draw target cards. We have that. Select the target. We have that. Determine and place sights. That's what I'm doing now. Now I know I'm doing my pilots. And then we do bandits. Um... When we start doing our target bound flight, that's when we draw our bandits. Oh, I need to do the center. I forgot about that. We need four for the center. So I'll pull out four. And we get no sight. We get an SA3. We get an uh, infantry. And we get a no sight. So the center is not too bad. Um, infantry, it's a little harder for them to damage you. Uh, we got a lot of SA-9s, though. A lot of SA-9s. So, those are not great. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they're the most, uh, the most dangerous, and they have a bunch of them. One, two, three, four, five... Five SA-9s, a uh, couple SA-3s, three, three SA-3s, and one, two SA-7s. So that's, this is a heavily defended target, as you might expect, since it's a headquarters. 
So now I'm going to, um, I assigned my pilots, we already talked about that, and now I'm going to arm my aircraft, and so this time when I come back, sorry about it being a little slightly out of focus there, this time when I come back we'll have, I'll go over what each aircraft is carrying, and then we'll start our target bound flight by drawing our event card, and uh, we don't have an escalation keyword on our target, so I don't have to draw an escalation card for this mission. So that's next. Okay, so here we see our loadouts. I'll do the uh, the Skyhawks and then the Phantoms. So you can see we've got Little, Mouse, and Brick all flying A4 Skyhawks. Little's got two cluster bombs with, at one weight each and a Mark 84, which is a three weight for his total of five. Mouse has both of my allowable AIM-9s. So we're allowed a total of six. Uh, per day. I used three on the first mission. I have three available on this mission. He's got the two AIM-9s here, um, which is the only air-to-air -air missile that an A-4 can carry. So he's carrying two Sidewinders and a Mark 84 iron bomb. Brick has the Mark 84 as well as a Mark 83. And now we'll do the, uh, the Phantoms. So here are our Phantoms, Warrior, Storm, and Crusader, who is our flight leader. So, um, flight leader only really matters if you have situational awareness, which none of these guys do. So, just a note for, uh, for future reference. So, warriors carrying an AGM-62, which can only be fired high, but has a range of one. Then we have some rockets, which are good for suppression. So, if I, if I want to, I can fire these to help, um possibly suppress an attack on one of the on myself or one of the other uh, aircraft to uh, you know basically save save from being attacked by by our sights so he's got um, two rockets and then he's got a mark 83 storm is carrying the big guy the m118 uh, the big bomb here then we've got the uh, one of our I bought a Shafrir, which is an air-to-air -air missile so that I'd have a total of four because there are a lot of bandits in this particular um, target. So he's got a Shafrir and he's got a Mark 82 iron bomb as well, which has a pretty high uh, two hit number, but he does get a plus one air to ground. So I'm just going to hope for the best there. And then Crusader, our flight leader, he's got, oh, well, he also has the one M118 and he's got the, i uh, got an AIM-7. He gets a plus one air to air and air to ground. Um, so this actually, this AIM-7 should have a pretty decent shot of hitting, I hope. Uh, basically a 50-50 chance, uh, pending the bandits, which we don't even know what they are yet. So that's got, uh, you can't fire it in the same box. So it has, to, it's a standoff weapon, so, but it does have a range of two. So that means I could actually, from the approach, I could actually, uh, or the pre-approach area, I could actually send it into the center area and hit a bandit in there. And then we also have a Mark 82. And again, he's got the plus one for, for the air to ground as well. So I'm hoping to make some hay since both Storm and Crusader have plus one air to ground. I'm hoping I can get big numbers with these two because with 19 hits required to destroy this uh, central headquarters, that's a tough, tough ask. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of expect this mission to fail, but we're going to take a crack at it anyway, because it is an invasion target and therefore important to try to uh, to knock it out. Uh, one other thing I did before I did my loadout was I did the angle of attack for all of the sites, which I forgot to do. When I drew the sites, you're supposed to draw their angle of attack out of a separate cup at the same time, which I didn't do. So actually, we ended up doing not too badly. Um, they're all pretty much just straight ahead, except for this guy over here. He's got 360 coverage. You don't draw AOA for uh, the center area. It's just the outer areas that get those. So they're all basically straight ahead pointing out. So for south, for example, they point down. North points up. East, west. So uh, as far as my t mission planning goes, I believe I'm going to come in this way. Uh, possibly this way and this way. Maybe. Um, they also, if you look, they all have L's here in the corner, which means they can only fire at low. So I may come in high, 
just to um, see if I can maybe knock some of these out. I do have a, um, actually I don't really have any munitions, but you know, I may come in high with, uh, with my two uh, phantoms that are carrying the M118s as we go through here and then when you move from one area to another area, you can change, you can move and change altitude. So I could come in high this way, start here high, go through here high so that they can't attack me, then drop down low in center and use my uh, weapons there. Now, of course, we also have to draw bandits, which is the next, the, uh, which, well, not quite the next. What we're going to do first is draw our event card, which is off shot right now. I'll pull that in. I decided that it would be more interesting to see the tactical display fairly large as opposed to seeing the whole board here where you can see the, you know, the event cards and everything. So I'm going to draw my event card now for, uh, for pre, for the inbound, we would do the top area over targets, the middle area and outbound is the, the bottom area. So this one is we get to destroy one random site in the center area for pre-strike. So that's actually pretty, pretty nice. We have an SA-3, which has a 5-7-9 attack, and we have uh, infantry, which has a 6-10-11. I think it's kind of obvious that with the uh, this SA-3 having a range of, of 2, we should get rid of that. So he's going away. And now all we have here is the infantry pending our bandit draw. So now we would... Uh, place our aircraft and um, sites. So I'm actually going to bring little and then uh, warrior, one of our F4s, are coming in low. Everybody else is mostly air to ground or a mix of air to ground, air to air. So on the flip side of the counters, you have an H for high. So mouse, brick, storm, and our flight leader, uh, crusader, will all come in high. Okay, so now once you do that, then the next step is to... Um, determine and place bandits. So that's our next step. All right, so once again, I forgot to do something. I kind of skipped the stage here where it says Intel air defense uh, adjustment. So based on our Intel track, which is currently at one or plus one center site, we need to draw another, another chit here and we draw no site. It's hard to see, no sight. So back in the cup, no harm, no foul. We move on. So we now have to draw our bandit. So we use the same cup because as I mentioned earlier on the flip side of the site is a bandit. Although I did the air defense and the place bandits backwards. So it, I guess it really doesn't matter. We're on the turn counter it has a, on turn one, which is number 11 here. So we are at step eight and I already did, I just did nine. So we're going to do eight now. So according to our target, each approach gets two bandits and the center gets four. All right. So we get a, we get a no bandit. So that's one for uh, our center area. I guess I'll do center area first. We get four bandits from there. Uh, Again, we get a no bandit. Uh, no bandit. I am shaking it up. I get up there. But no bandit. So that's four no bandits for our center here, uh, which is great. Now we have to do the uh, the approaches, and each approach gets two bandits. So. And I'll draw two out together. For the north, we get a no bandit and a no bandit. There are a lot of no bandits in here, um, or no sites, because that's the most 
There are 12 of those. There are nine SA9s. There are five SA3s slash MiG-19s. The SA9 is flipped, uh, is, is with a MiG-17. MiG-21 slash SA7 is three. Infantry slash SU-7 is three. So we know we have one infantry out here leaving two. We have a bunch of uh, SA-9s out here, which makes it unlikely I'm going to pull a MiG-19 out. And we also have a couple SA-7s, I believe, which would be MiG-21s. So I'm going to do two for the east now, which is actually where I'm approaching from. And I get a No Bandit and an SU-7. So we get an SU-7 in here. When we do the south approach, I'll draw two out for that as well. We get a no and a no. Both no sites have no bandit on the other side. Nothing in the south, nothing in the north. One SU-7, nothing in the center, and one SU-7 in the east so far. Okay, so the west, we have a MiG-23, which is actually wrong. This should be a MiG-21. So I'm going to swap this counter out for a MiG-21. And this SA-3 is backed by a MiG-19. So we get a MiG-19 and we're going to get a MiG-21. And I'm going to swap this counter out and put that here. And then we'll be ready to move on. Okay, so here we have our MiG-21. That's going to go here in the west approach with the MiG-19. Let's put them both up here and get our sights there. So uh, the nice thing is... 21 has a range of 1, the 19 has a range of 0. Now, they're going to be able to move towards me because all my aircraft are over here. So I have three, I basically have three bandits to deal with, which is good because I have four air-to-air -air missiles. They're not all guaranteed to hit, but it's a lot better than having 8 or 10 bogeys to deal with. So we will begin here and move on to our next so we did the place bandits. We did the Intel defense, air defense adjustment, which ended up being no sight. We draw, we drew our, oh, that's next. We draw our over target event card. So we use, this is good ground crew and we use the middle section. Gain plus two on all attacks targeting the center area. So that's awesome. And I'm gonna put that right here so I pro hopefully won't forget to do it right by where I'm rolling. So once I get to the center, that's going to actually help me uh, hit, which is <laughs> outstanding. Uh, so then we put our turn counter in the one. That's up here off shot, but it is on turn one. Fast pilot attacks. I don't have any fast pilots. All of my pilots are slow. So we go to the sights and bandits attack. So one pilot may suppress and a pilot under attack may use evasion. All right, so we have to determine who can fire first of all. And actually right now, the only one that can is our SU-7 here because he has a one and he can go high or low. So we have six possible targets. And let me get a D6 out. So that'll just, we'll start here on, well, you can't see them, but we'll go little, one, Mouse two, Brick three, Warrior four, Storm five, Crusader six. I'm gonna roll my D6, we got a two, that's Mouse. So our SU-7's attacking Mouse. Mouse is at high altitude. The Bandits, they don't have an altitude. They just have a range, but they are capable of firing at both high and low. So you can see here, we've got a five slash seven slash nine. So five is one hit, five, five or six would be one hit, seven or eight would be uh, two hits and force Mouse to jettison his uh, jettison his um, ordnance, and uh, the other one would be uh, the eight, a nine or a ten rather would be uh, destruction. So he has a an opportunity to evade, which would give him two stress. He's carrying three weight points of ordnance, which impacts. Um, his air-to-air -air ability. So, hmm. I think we're just going to roll with it, and we're going to hope that he don't he doesn't roll a nine or a ten. Okay, so we rolled a five, 
That will be stress one on mouse. So here's my one. I'm going to put, place it on mouse's card. So he now has one stress. That's the end of our SU7's um, attack. So now we can go to, uh, he's the only one that has a range of one. Uh, actually, this one has a range of two, but it can't attack. It can only attack based on its angle of attack here. It can attack straight ahead, and it can attack this and this. So all of my aircraft are in this box, and it cannot attack them. Now over here, we have our two, um, we have our MiG-19 and our MiG-21. The MiG-21 has a range of one, so he can fire into center. MiG-19 has a range of zero, so I'm going to move them both to the center area. That will be their move. And nobody else has a range of greater than zero. Only, this, only these two sites, which don't have angle of attack for it, they can't hit this one or the east approach. So that's good because that saves me from having to deal with these SA-3s. So we are going to move on to... Uh, the slow pilot's attack. So Mouse is carrying two AIM-9s. We will fire an AIM-9, which has a range of one. We'll fire the AIM-9 at our SU-7 here. He's got a plus three. Mouse has a, a zero for his air-to-air -air modifier. And um, we're not in the same box. If you're in the same box, you have to apply a weight penalty based on what air-to-ground munitions you're carrying. And with a three, uh, he would actually be a minus one if we were dogfighting in the same box. But because the AIM-9 has a range of one, I can fire it while I'm outside of that dogfighting range, and it won't get a negative modifier on my roll. So basically, I'm getting a plus three on my AIM-9, which has a two-hit number of six. So if I get a three or higher, we shoot down our SU-7. Well, we rolled a one, so we did not shoot him down. So that means I need to use um, Crusader, who has, or Storm. They both have an air-to-air -air missile. Actually, uh, I'm going to use Crusader. Crusader has a plus one air-to-air. -air. He's firing an AIM-7, which has a range of one or two. And it has a six to hit, so he gets a plus one and a plus three is a plus four. We need a two. And we got a seven, so the SU-7 has been shot down. And um, I expended my AIM-7 as well, which I was hoping not to have to use two missiles on one aircraft. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we will have a little... Um, well, let's see. Crusader and Mouse fired missiles. Okay, so Crusader and Mouse already fired. What I'm going to have now is I'll have Storm, who's carrying, actually not Storm, Warrior, is carrying two rockets. Now, So I'm going to fire one of my rockets with Warrior. Targeting our SA-9, I need a 7 to hit. And a 6. Alright, well, that did not work. So now we're going to move Warrior and Little. We'll come in low. This is going to get crowded. Morgan Little coming in low, Mouse high, uh, Brick will stay high, Storm will stay high, Crusader will stay high. So that's going to so complete uh, turn one, so I'm going to move my turn marker to turn two, and we will move on fast by <clears throat> fast phase, we don't have anybody, so we go to the sites. Now, there obviously are more that can attack us now. Now, both the SAM sites here, the SA-9 and our SA-7, they can only attack low, so that limits them to attacking uh, Little and Warrior. The um, 
the SU-7 has been destroyed, but we have a MiG-21 here who can fire as well. He's uh, high. So let me roll. We'll do the aircraft first. And we'll use the same one through six that we did before. We get a six. So that's Crusader, our flight leader. He's high. The MiG-21 is going to attack him. So um, we're still not in the same box right now. So the air to ground munitions don't don't um, don't matter. But uh, yeah, so we're rolling uh, four for one. Four, five, six is one. Seven, eight is two. Nine, ten is destroyed. So we're looking for low again. We got a three. So a three is a miss. Now we'll do our sights. So uh, since the, the sights can only attack one of these two, we'll go odds for little and even for warrior. Odd. So the SA1, SA7 rather will attack little. So it's a six slash eight slash ten. All right, let's try this again. A zero, which is a ten. So little has unfortunately been shot down. So since little has been shot shot down, that's going to make it really hard for me to destroy the target because I'm losing several air to ground munitions. But it is what it is, and I didn't really think I'd pass this uh, mission anyway. So Little is shot down, and during our homebound flight, we'll have to do a search and rescue to see if we rescue him. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to remove his counter. And so now our SA-9 has to attack Warrior. He's the only one that he can attack, so we roll again. One, seven, nine. So uh, I think we'll have Warrior attempt to use his rocket to suppress the SA-9. So it gets a, here's the rocket's counter, and right here, this yellow S means it's a suppression modifier, plus three. So he will be uh, suppressed on a four or higher. And we rolled a seven. So that is suppressed, which cancels the attack. So that's good. So we, we expended our rocket, but we canceled their attack. So now we will move our MiG-19 up so that he's in the same box. And then that ends our, um, that ends their move. We go to our move. Storm is carrying a, sh a Shafrir, which has a zero range. He's going to fire that at um, the MiG-19. So he has a, he has no uh, modifier. He's only, he is carrying... A lot of weight though so with us being in the same uh, same thing here the MiG-19 gets a plus four but the weight modifier I believe is a minus three yes the weight modifier is a minus three so we need a four or higher to shoot him down got a nine so the MiG-19 has been shot down with a shot missile Okay, um, Mouse has an aim nine, and we'll take a shot at our MiG-21 here. So the aim nine is a six, Mouse has no modifier, uh, is a plus two on the MiG-21, so we need a four or higher to shoot the MiG-21 down. And we got a seven, so the MiG-21 has the MiG -21's also been shot down. All right, so now we'll be moving into our target next. Um, so we're going to move everybody in to our target area. And he's going to pop to high. Warrior pops to high, and then everybody else, I believe, goes low. Yes. Everybody else goes low. So mouse. Now we're starting our target run here. And... Okay, so Warrior is the only one who's high because he's got an AGM-62, which needs to be launched from high. So that's the end of turn two. We go to turn three. Again, we start with the enemy. 
They only have, um, they have this guy, but his range is zero, so he can only attack. Like, he could theoretically attack this way, but because he's got 360, but he's his range is zero, so he doesn't have a, a, a range number here, so that indicates it's zero. Can't attack this way. So, um, that means only the infantry can attack. So we have five now, which makes it a little bit diff different, 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 Oof. all right. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got a one. So he's attacking warrior. Oh, actually he can't attack warrior because he's high. Let me roll again. Oh, come on. Give me something other than a one or a two. Five. Okay. So he'll attack brick. So he's attacking brick. Now he needs a six for a, a one stress hit or a 10 to shoot him down. Hopefully we don't roll a 10. We roll the five. So brick gets uh, one stress. Okay. So brick has one stress. That's his attack. Now we can attack our target. We'll do Warrior first. He's got an AGM 62 here, which has a 4 slash 7 slash 10. So 4 would be 1 hit. 4, 5, 6 is 1 hit. 7, 8, 9 is 2 hits. 10 is 3 hits. I need 20 hits because it's 19. And we get one, uh, we have a plus 1 on our infra track, infrastructure track. So we need 20 hits. If everything hits at its maximum... I can get 3, 6, 9, 13, uh, 16, 20, 22, 24, so 26. I can get 28 total. So I need to roll well, but I don't need to roll 10s every time. So let's see. Storm has a plus 1 air to ground. Uh, we also get a plus 2 from our event card. So we get a plus three, so that means on this uh, seven, eight, well, here, we'll just roll and we'll see what we get. We rolled a nine, so that's going to be higher than a ten. That's three hits. Okay, so three hits so far. So that was Warrior. That was his attack. Now we'll do Mouse. Mouse has a Mark 84. Mark 84 which is a three, five, eight. So again, we get a plus two. So we need a f at least a, well, we, sh we should hit. We'll hit with a one, but we'd like to do more than one point of damage. A five becomes a seven, which is two hits. So this three becomes a five. Okay. Now, uh, Brick. Brick has... Two options. He's got a Mark 84 and a Mark 83. We'll go with the Mark 84 first because that has uh, bigger potential for damage. The Mark 84 is a 3 slash 5 slash 8. Rolled a 1 plus 2 is a 3, so that's one more hit. So we're up to 6. Not great, but it is what it is. So now we go to uh, Warrior Already Fired. So we have Storm and Crusader left. So Storm and Crusader are carrying the Mark, the M118s, the Mark 118s here, 345, uh, 3469. Hopefully we roll high. If I roll at least a 7, that'll be 4 hits. We rolled a 5, so that's a 9. Uh, no, what am I talking about? That's a 7, so that's 3 hits. 3 more hits. So this is now a 9. Okay, and now the same with Crusader. Got an 8 plus 2 is 10. That is 4 hits. So now we're at 13. So let's do this. Let's do a 10 and a 3. So we're at 13 of the 20 we need to actually pull this off. Okay, that is the end of turn 3, however. So now we got to go to turn 4. And we have to roll for our infantry attack again. So we'll roll first to do determine who he's shooting at. And I keep rolling one. Actually, wait, 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 wait. We should use that one because Warrior needs to drop down to low anyway. So Warrior's now at low. So he'll be attacking Warrior. I rolled a four. We could just use that. 
<laughs> I shouldn't, but I rolled it and you saw it. So that's going to be um, a mess. I'm taking it, man. This mission is really hard. All right, so now we'll go back to Brick and work our way through. So Brick is now going to, going to use his Mark 83, which needs a 5 for 1, a 7 for 2, or a 10 for 3. So again, we get a plus 2. We got a 10. So that's 3 hits. With our Mark 83, we are up to 16. We need 4 more hits. Four more hits. Uh, we're at Warrior. He's got the same weapon, a Mark 83. Same weapon. So let's roll our die and add our plus two. Nine plus two is 11. That is three more hits. Three more hits. So we are now at 19. Do I have another nine over here? All right. Now I have two opportunities to roll a five or greater because both Storm and Crusader are carrying the smaller bomb, the Mark. Uh, come on, zoom it. There we go. Mark 82. We need a seven for one hit, 10 for two, but we only need one hit. So we need a five. And as I said, Crusader has the same bomb and these are the last weapons that these guys are carrying. So we need to hope that we can get, and we're also on turn four, so I would only have one more crack at it. So we're going to roll here and hope that we get at least a five. And we got a five. Woo! That was, uh, that was a lot more uh, lucky, rolling-wise, than I usually am. But that destroys the target. So we did successfully destroyed the target. Now we have to exit the area. Um, so what we're going to do is everybody's going to go to the east approach and we're going to go back to high altitude so that the, uh, at the surface, the air missiles in here can't fire at us. Actually, it says we're, we're able to, to just exit anytime we want. So we're at, we're going to take our counters off the map, put them back with the aircraft so Storm, uh, Crusader actually came out with his Mark 82 still on the rack. And uh, the target was destroyed. So now we have to roll for our um, search and rescue results for Little, who was shot down. So the modifiers for this are pretty interesting. You have to add up the weight of all the munitions um, expended or, or used in the mission by any aircraft so i obviously had five other aircraft that dropped probably uh, three to four each and you would add points for that for each weight point you add one so that would make it pretty you only need a nine um after modifying i rolled a two i know i had more than seven uh, weight points uh, because the two M118s are four each and that's eight just those two by themselves That were dropped by Storm and Crusader. So I'm going to say that uh, little has been picked up Now for getting shot down he gets three uh, Three stress All the pilots will get three additional stress at the end of the mission for um uh, just for the uh, the target, the target being in uh, in northern Syria. So I'm going to draw my uh, homebound event card, which I'm supposed to do before the, the the SAR results. So we get two random pilots suffer one stress. So I have my six because uh, little is back in the fold. Roll the five. So Storm is going to get an additional point of stress for stormy weather. And his name is appropriately Storm. So he gets an additional point. So once all is said and done, Little's going to have six, which makes him uh, unfit. <laughs> so uh, that's bad because he's shaken at three and then uh, unfit at four. So he's unfit. Little, Little will have six and be unfit. Mouse will have uh, four and be okay. Brick will have four and be okay. Warrior will have three. Storm will have four and be okay. Uh, Warrior is also okay at three. 
and uh, Crusader will have three and be okay. So uh, after we do that, adjust invasion counter. So our invasion counter does not get adjusted because we did not, um, we're at the far left. We didn't do it, uh, it doesn't get moved. We do get one stress actually, now that I see that. So that's actually gonna be one additional for everybody, which is awesome. Uh, escalation card not called for here. So we're gonna record our mission outcome as a success, target was destroyed. From that target, we get two victory points. Now we were at zero because even though we got one for our first target destroying, our escalation card took took a victory point away. So we're at currently at two. And um, a recon and intel tracks will each get to move up one each. And the eraser fell out of my pencil. Um, so all the tracks except invasion are now at um, or have moved one. So let me fill out my log and I'll show the log and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, well, uh, you know we can do experience and uh, stress and all that stuff. So okay, so here's our log following that last mission. We have, uh, we've destroyed 10 and 36. Little has seven stress. He's, these are their cool ratings. Everybody got two XP. Little's at seven. Star is three. Warrior has three. Knight has seven. Brick and Mouse both have four. Storm has five. Crusader has two. Now the, um, these were all adjusted, obviously. That was four, became three because of the cool. Five became four, five became four, four became two. So that's where that comes from. We get five, uh, five SO per day. So we were at zero, we went up to five, we were at two XP total. Uh, I wrote down minus one here for the event from, it was actually from the escalation card, not really an event, but I know we're at two. Uh, two is still firmly in the dismal range on our uh, campaign card. So let me bring that in real quick. So here is our campaign card. Uh, you can see our target was up here on 36, which I guess is kind of out of shot. But I need to take that off because that target has been destroyed. So all our tracks, Invasion is still at firmly in the first spot where we want it. So going forward, we'd have uh, four target cards to draw. We still have to put in the extra asset in the center tile when we hit the Intel Air Defense Adjustment, and our infrastructure still gets a plus one. So if we can move infrastructure one more over, we'll be at zero. And then if we can move Intel over, we'll be at no change, and that'll be nice because we won't be getting any... The targets won't will be... Not e well, they'll be easier. They'll be at whatever the value is for destruction instead of getting an additional one. And uh, obviously, if we can move recon over, we'll draw three instead of four. So that would be nice. And we still want to keep this at no penalty for as long as possible, which I know is now off shot. I just looked. So no penalty because um, you can see it gets kind of bad. And if you hit this one, you're done. You're toast. Game over. Uh, so that's the end of the video. Uh, this was part two. Part three, I might actually switch it up, play a different campaign with some different aircraft, maybe something either older or more modern. I'm kind of of two minds of, on that as far as what would be more interesting to do. Uh, I'm an F-15 guy, so doing something that involves F-15s would be kind of interesting for me personally. But I'm also kind of intrigued by doing something from like the Independence War or the Suez Crisis when we get some kind of like World War II era and, and early jet aircraft involved. So I'm going to uh, kind of run that, run, ruminate on that, if you will, over the next uh, day or so until I do my next, uh, my next video, which will probably be the last one. Because I have a brand new game that's just been released fairly recently that's going to be the next part of this series and I'd like to get to that sooner rather than later. I think um, that one will be a fairly popular series. 
So for now, I am going to sign off. My name is Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. As always, thank you for watching. Much appreciated. Please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. If you've watched my videos, you've heard this rigmarole before. But uh, it's no less true. That's why I say it every time. So until next time, as always, happy gaming.